What's up fellow Legos fans, DJ Legos back for another unsponsored honest review and today we're taking a look back at a uh, 2021 Lego Marvel set based off the What If show it is Tony Stark's Sakarian Iron Man. It is set number 76194. Comes with 316 pieces. Uh, recommended for building ages 8 and up. And uh, at the time it was released, it did cost $35 here in the United States. And it is based off the uh, What If animated series. However, uh, what this set is based off of, uh, the episode didn't originally air back in 2021. It got it got pushed back to season two. However, uh, the episode has now dropped at the time of me recording this. Uh, and I have watched it, but uh, I will not hold it, uh, hold uh, the accuracy uh, to the episode against this set or for this set. Uh, but without further ado, let's start deconstructing and see how it stacks up. Sorry, as always with the main figure. So first off for figures, we're gonna take a look at Tony Stark. Now I've talked about this exact figure uh, before on the channel, uh, but this is the set it originated in. Uh, so uh, starting with the hair, it's that same sleepy boy hair that we've seen uh, used for Tony Stark throughout the years. The head is also uh, not new to this figure. It, it's been around since 2018. Uh, it is very nice. It does have a nice likeness to Robert Downey Jr. Uh, but it also is kind of uh, vague enough to also pass for uh, some non-movie based Tony Starks. Uh, but the main attraction here is the torso print, uh, which is trying to reference the uh, Black Sabbath uh, t-shirt he has uh, that he's wearing in the Avengers uh, for a little bit of an in-joke there uh, but uh, Lego uh, couldn't get the license or uh, whatnot to uh, that uh, t-shirt design so they just uh, kind of approximated it using a reference to Explorians and Rock Raiders uh, to um, older uh, Lego themes. I love when they uh, reference older themes like this. Uh, so uh, the le lettering up at the top there is more Metallica, honestly, than uh, Black Sabbath, but it does say Raiders up at the top. The helmet there is the uh, helmet that was both used in uh, Raiders and Explorians, and I think Aquazone too. Uh, so, uh, flipping around to the back, uh, you do have some nice uh, back tor torso detail for that shirt. It's just a couple of creases, but it works pretty fine. And then flipping the hair around so you can see the alternate expression again. It's that same uh, Tony Stark head we've been seeing since 2018 uh, with a heads up display and the aggressive facial expression. Doesn't quite work here uh, just because he doesn't have a suit uh, to put on. Um, in the basic sense but yeah next up we got valkyrie uh pretty much in her garb that she wore in thor ragnarok uh which is nice uh talk about the actual uh figure uh here's her accessory she does come with uh that standard uh lego broadsword uh, that they've been using for uh while now and she also comes with a uh, standard Lego bottle piece there in the old uh, trans brown color uh, pretty uh, little reference to what the character was actually doing in Thor Ragnarok a lot of the time uh, and if you haven't seen the episode uh, she, this is pretty much replaying Thor Ragnarok but with Tony Stark uh, so yeah uh, but the actual face print is really nice. It's really accurate. And uh, again, it's way more accurate than the original figure uh, because the original figure for the uh, Thor Ragnarok sets uh, was more based off concept art. And this is actually, uh, Lego had a little bit more leeway here uh, to actually design it to look more like the actual uh, on-screen costume uh, since she wears the same thing in the episode. Uh, and that, uh, face print is pretty nice. Uh, I 
really like the facial expression as well. It really fits the character, especially how she's portrayed portrayed in the episode here. Uh, really nice torso print, again, really accurate to the actual uh, outfit she wears, uh, really nicely designed. Uh, you do have the uh, kind of metallic uh, prints there as well. And then flipping around, she actually has the same hair piece that was introduced for the character uh, back in uh, 2017 for uh, the set she came in. And the uh, cloth cape here is actually the exact same uh, cut of fabric and the same style uh, there as well so they just uh, re-put that into production uh, flipping that up though uh, you can see a good look at her back uh, torso uh, which again looks really nice uh, really well done really reflective of the costume there and of course she has no alternate expression uh, just because uh, the hairpiece she has uh, wouldn't really allow it and last up we have the watcher now talking about the actual figure here uh, I'm gonna talk about the actual uh, problems or the somewhat of this figure that's been pointed out over uh, the years uh, since this figure debuted. Uh, his head is way too small. I think uh, some people have said he should use that new uh, big fig head that they came out with, especially this uh, that year this set came out. Uh, really re would reflect him better and having the uh, woody arm and arms and legs would have uh, made this character more in height. Uh, but that I kind of agree with that but uh, at the same time uh, maybe Lego was given uh, reference material where the, it was impossible to kind of uh, determine the proper size here and uh, maybe Lego budget constraints uh, maybe prevented them from either uh, pulling those uh, woody arms and legs uh, out of production back into production uh, just for this one figure. I know the Avatar sets have since brought those back, but uh, maybe LEGO didn't see uh, the point of uh, bringing them back just for this one character. Uh, the head also could have been a case of uh, various uh, factors of them not really having uh, that uh, head mold in ready for production uh, for both figures uh, and didn't really uh, see the point of putting this on an actual minifigure at that time. Um, or again, like I said, they could have easily just gotten uh, reference material for uh, this that made it impossible to determine the actual size of this character uh, in relation to others. Uh, but talking about the actual figure here, finally, uh, face print, uh, really nicely done. Uh, does utilize a darker skin tone uh, that is just uh, consistent with how the character is portrayed in the actual animation there. A really nice face expression as well really captures the character I uh, really like the torso print uh, however that gold uh, design there of that uh, kind of chest emblem uh, it's not really uh, opaque enough compared to what they picture on the box uh, so uh, I think Lego should uh, keep working on that and uh, flipping this around the back uh, he does come with a cape and collar piece however uh, the collar is a lot more of a stiffer material and you do have the uh, spongy cape here uh, for the back uh, which lifting that up you can see the back torso printing uh, which just uh, carries the details from the front of the suit uh, on to the back there uh, really looks really nice and again uh, different colored arms also really reflective of the so here is the set all built up uh, pretty much uh, talking about design here uh, this is pretty standard uh, design if you've ever built one of Lego's Hulkbusters uh, you got the pretty uh, standard design here uh, build uh, techniques uh, there are a few differences uh, with the arms uh, built a little differently uh, but we'll get into that in a moment uh, but uh, this does have a really uh, striking color scheme here 
That just correlates to uh, the bright, vibrant colors that we saw on Sakaar and Thor Ragnarok. Uh, you do have a nice uh, smattering of colors with the teal here, the uh, keat orange, uh, kind of that yellowish orange color. Uh, some gray thrown in there for some metal, uh, some red. It all looks really, really nice. Uh, and uh, everything that you see on here is a sticker uh, aside from the helmet that is a curved piece so uh, lego tends to print those um, the print's not the greatest but uh, it does the design is very nice and uh, one aspect of these stickers that i really love is uh, on that helmet you do have the little sakarian markings here and they are printed in like a uh, metallic blue color so they they really shine when the light hits them uh, just right but uh, another thing to note about the stickers is uh, this um, it isn't as bad as more recent sets but the color matching on the stickers uh, to the actual part they're on uh, isn't the greatest here uh, but turn this around so you can see more of the design here I really uh, like um, how the shoulders are done towards the back here you can see a little bit of a tease uh, for uh, the one of the main play features of the set here uh, which uh, is corresponding to the actual episode and uh, does look very nice even though uh, this is all just uh, tacked on here uh, the designer did a good job at trying to make this thing uh, look uh, pretty show accurate uh, with uh, trying to uh, keep in line with uh, the lego uh, standard design here so going in the main cockpit here uh, the head just uh, hinges up as always for these Hulkbusters uh, that gets you a nice little scene area and then this whole front just folds uh, down and you do get a computer screen there uh, to uh, give Tony uh, something to pilot the thing with which I appreciate because uh, they don't always put controls on the inside of the Hulkbusters that they make uh, but you, you do have two little studs here uh, for uh, Tony to uh, kind of just sit in there uh, stand you put them in there and uh, the thing just kind of rests on the slopes here uh, which is nice and uh, this closes back up uh, pretty nicely and you're you have your Tony back in there uh, that you do have that spoiler built uh, on there as well. Uh, it does have some stickers on the back there. The arms of the Hulkbuster uh, here are very nicely designed. Uh, they're pretty much identical in build. Uh, they just uh, flip colors uh, for that uh, mishmash of parts uh, motif that they got for this mech here and uh, different stickers and all that. Uh, and it they are mirrored uh, to either side uh, but you do have uh, this nice little gauntlet here uh, built up uh, on the wrist here you actually have this nice little detail of like this uh, spiked piece uh, probably for some uh, measure play for some gladiator and then at the end you do have a couple fingers down at the legs here uh, pretty much again same as the arms they're built identically uh, the only difference between them is uh, left and right and then just the uh, miss uh, different coloring of uh, parts here uh, just to create that mish uh, salvage look here uh, you do have a couple of stickers for the knee pads and uh, the feet are also really nicely designed uh, they're nice and uh, stable and they're nicely built so this thing has a nice uh, ground uh, that won't fall out beneath it and of course uh, with any mech we got to talk articulation so for the main body you have none you don't have waist swivel you don't have anything uh, but at the shoulders you do have this nice ball joint uh, which can get you a full rotation of 360 around the shoulder there and you get some nice up and down motion uh, they do bump into the back wheels a little bit uh, at the wrist here 
Uh, you do have a swivel joint there, uh, just because uh, the elbows are pre-bent. Um, it's just uh, for the design of this thing and one of the play features uh, that we'll get into and then each of the four fingers uh, can be individually articulated and uh, you do have a posable thumb at the uh, hip here you do have a ratchet joint at the uh, hip joint here which can go uh, forward and uh, back that much you can go forward that much and it pretty much bumps into uh, parts uh, but uh, you can get it a little bit up but then you're just uh, forcing parts uh, to come apart there it displays out that far and uh, yeah uh, at the ankles you do have some nice back uh, where it'll go back that far It'll go forward that far uh, just uh, because parts are running into each other and you do have some limited uh, ankle uh, rotation there uh, but overall I do think the articulation for this thing is pretty nice uh, for what you get uh, but let's talk about that uh, main play feature of the or over the main play feature of the set uh, this has no stud shooters or anything uh, but what it does do is it transforms into a race car uh, which is actually accurate to the episode uh, so I really appreciate that i thought when this set first came out that might have been something the designers uh, made up but uh lo and behold they did not uh which even if they had made up it's still a fun, fun little play feature to incorporate uh so how to transform this thing? so transform this thing uh it is a bit of a uh, parts former um if you know the how the transformers line works uh but you have to do this in a certain order otherwise uh you're just going to end up destroying this thing uh, so first thing you do uh you take this off uh this is makes up part of the chassis of the actual race car next step you pretty much just take all the limbs off and then you separate the head uh from the abdomen uh, you also take the wheels off the uh actual back assembly here step number three uh you pretty much just rotate the spoiler uh, so it's facing forward and then step four you pretty much just bring the wheel back wheels forward or number five you just take the middle uh, part that was on the back and you plug it into here uh, just to create the uh, length of the V. Step number six, you pretty much just take uh, these two uh, shoulder pieces and you just rotate them in uh, just to create uh, some look for the actual race car of the side pods. And then you take the hip area and you put this. Number seven, uh, you pretty much just take the wheels you removed uh, from the back there and you plug them into the front they become the front wheels of the race car and you also bring down the uh, front uh, cockpit here uh, which I just bring the abdomen part down uh, so it forms the front part of the car as well as the uh, little windscreen of the car and uh, you're done here uh, so all you have to do is uh, put Tony in the driver's seat uh, which is formed uh, by the abdomen being placed there. Uh, you do still have the control console uh, from there as well. Uh, so overall, I really like the design of this uh, car. Um, it does, I do think it looks really nice. Uh, it's very uh, toyetic and uh, it does add more play value to the actual uh, set here. Uh, it's very, uh, nicely designed a uh, little uh, bit of gappiness here uh, around the vehicle area but uh, that might be just because uh, you have a lot of parts forming uh, with this set so you have to leave the legs and the uh, hands uh, to the side just to transform this thing uh, in the show, uh, it actually just reassembles into a car, uh, but uh, there's no way uh, LEGO could have known uh, that. Uh, they were probably just given the, the briefing of the 
that the mech can turn into a car so uh, they worked with what they had and uh, what they came up with I really like I really think this looks good it, it does roll really well and it does again add a lot of play value uh, to this set so here are the extra pieces you can expect for the set. A pretty standard selection of slopes, tiles, and a couple of technical pieces. Taking a look at the instructions, you do get one booklet. Uh, this is a pre-2022 set, so uh, we still have the box art on the actual cover here, uh, which looks nice. Uh, you do have uh, the again the box art from the set you do have the qr code uh there in the corner although it's uh kind of not um uh, matched up to where it should be uh interior of the instructions you do have uh they're showing you the, uh that you should be building this uh one bag at, at a time uh advertising the building instructions app uh if you want to utilize that uh you do have the showing of uh, the various bags and the stages of building each bag gives you uh, how to put minifigures together and whatnot uh, going towards the back into the back you do have 70 pages uh, total for the uh, complete build here and then at page 72 it just gives you uh, instructions on how to transform uh, the Hulkbuster into the car and uh, it's pretty straightforward uh, it just goes through it even uh, after I and uh, it's pretty straightforward uh, it does show you how and uh, you can uh, re reverse that easily just to put the uh, mech back together uh, it's a pretty simple process at the back of the instructions here you do have a cross sell for the infinity saga which was available at the time uh, the set was available and uh, then you have the parts inventory if you uh, need it and at the back uh, you do have a pirate for that uh, product feedback. Take a look at the box it's that standard uh, 30 to 40 dollar size though it's the uh, taller uh, version of that uh, for the box art you do have that uh, style that was introduced uh, this year uh, 2021 year in fact uh, with the um, property up in the corner there uh, you do have a nice uh, image of uh, the watcher there uh, letting you know uh, what this is all based off of nice product shot of the set that we saw in the instructions set specs with that comic book paneling there uh, in the corner main figure call out down there uh, the uh, what if series logo down there in the bottom atop the box you just have more of the continuation of the comic book paneling uh, with Valkyrie uh, sparring the actual size for this set which is pretty interesting Marvel logo on the side there and then back of the box you do have a Lego location of the watcher there uh, which is nice and then you do have show off of the primary feature of this set uh, which you can transform it into a race car which I really like that feature so at the end of the day uh, my thoughts for the build uh, is pretty nice I really like how this was designed I really liked how um, the the build, uh, the design, uh, I mean, it is another Hulkbuster, but uh, uh, this one uh, kind of executes it in a really good way. And on top of that, you have that really nice uh, transforming feature uh, where you transform it into a race car. So that adds a little bit of extra value to the build there. Uh, going into the minifigures, I really like uh, the selection here. I do think that it could have used the Grandmaster. Uh, we could have gotten him uh, since uh, that is a pretty pivotal character. Uh, maybe LEGO didn't know that at the time, uh, but uh, really would have liked to have seen him. And of course, we do get the Watcher here, uh, which is pretty core to the show. And uh, this probably would have been the only uh, set to put them in because uh, this would have been on retail shelves uh, the longest uh, considering the other two that had what if stuff uh, was uh, the Hydra Stomper which was a retailer exclusive to Target and then you had the CMF series which uh, was on store shelves for about like uh, four months and even then it was kind of just uh, hit and miss uh, 
quality as always uh, prints and stickers are my biggest sticking points uh, Lego really needs to get better at that uh, like they used to be I uh, really uh, don't like that uh, however I do think uh, the price for this uh, was $35 uh, which uh, the other what if set which was a Hulkbuster 2 it was a Hydra Stomper uh, that was it valued at $30 this one's $35 it does come with about uh, 26 more pieces uh, that's just to add more bulk for the race car build uh, so you do have a little bit more value there and uh, talking since this is a discontinued set we gotta talk about uh, its value on the aftermarket which as the time of recording this, uh, the episode has just dropped. The episode has just dropped, uh, so I have no idea how uh, that is going to affect uh, the aftermarket sales. But uh, Brick Set lists, uh, if you want this set uh, on the aftermarket on Bricklink, uh, 24 for it new sealed in box and about $17 for it used and complete. And uh, with it being originally a $35 set, I can uh, see why uh, it probably got, um, it's not really in value on the aftermarket. Uh, number one, this is a, yet another Hulkbuster uh, that has a strike against it, but uh, not many people watched the first season of What If, so not a lot of people cared about it, uh, which is also why, part of the reason why uh, the value on this is so low, but the other big reason is the episode that uh, this is based off of, uh, like I said in the intro, uh, it wasn't even in season one, it had to be delayed to season two, so uh, this was on store shelves and it suffered the same fate as some Star Wars uh, sets based off the sequel trilogy uh, where uh, Lego did a good set, a good uh, job on a set, but uh, since it wasn't even in uh, in the film, uh, you had no reference to it, uh, so uh, you, you didn't know what it was based off of, so all you had to go on was uh, this was a Hulkbuster and uh, this looked uh, bizarre and uh, Again, uh, that probably contributes to low value of the set. Uh, so, uh, all in all, the uh, set does get an 8 out of 10 for me. Uh, again, even with the new episode drop, I highly recommend going out and getting this set on the aftermarket. Uh, probably before it uh, jumps in price, I'm assuming it will, uh, considering uh, how many more people are talking about this series and the episode drops. Uh, so, uh, yeah, 8 out of 10. Uh, again, I highly recommend it. Uh, comment below. Uh, let me know your thoughts. Uh, do you uh, think this was a good set? Do you not? Uh, subscribe, uh, like, ring the bell. All that jazz helps with the algorithm. And I will see you in the next video. Until next time, have a great life.